Welcome to your YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the channel of the Almighty God in the lips of a pastor. Your blessings await you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contacts as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. Shall we please rise up to pray? The Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come before you because of the mighty God. As we look at your word today, you will touch us, you will bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Please be seated. Today, we shall be looking at the importance and mystics of eldership in nation building. In this series, Answering the Call of the Almighty God, Part 60. Our references shall be from 4 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4 and verse 5. In 4 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Rimah. In 4 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in the ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. The Holy Spirit wishes to talk to us in two dimensions. Dimension number one. The eldership's prompt intervention on national leadership. Dimension number two, the eldership's private infliction on national leadership. If you look at dimension number one, the eldership prompt intervention on national leadership. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah because of the bribery and corruption that the sons were into as judges in Israel. Now, what I understand that the place of elders in any community, in any country, in any nation, cannot be overemphasized. We also understand that why youths are needed for nation building. Elders are the facilitators that would make their contributions more viable and relevant. Every youthful exuberance, every youthful zeal may be short lived if not properly guided by the experience of the air of elderly intervention. For every nation to grow heavily on all sides, Youth should be empowered, that's all right, to possess vital skills, but not without the continual guidance of the elders. The eldership spirit infuses managerial control and projections to pleasant results. The youthful inclination tends to sweet results without recourse to the procedures because of the lack of initial intimation and experience. But the elders' engagement brings to fruition the interjection of wits that we eventually get the needed results. Now, what I understand that the sons of Prophet Samuel had messed up the entire process of judging Israel in the proper sense. They are taken to bribery and corruption, and the process perverted justice in their, in their nation. They had misled their nation to the road of judicial collapse at that point. The eldership forum in Israel swung into action to salvage the deteriorated situation. We shall be looking at the critical lessons from the intervention of Israel's eldership forum. Number one, confrontation was missing in action. They never went to the judges in Israel to confront them on the bribery and corruption. No, they didn't do that. Now we can look at the critical lessons of Israel's eldership forum. Number two, they interface with the elderly in their nations. They didn't go to the youthful judges in Israel. We should learn from that. Number one, they did not confront them. So elders in our lands should not confront erring judges in leadership number two but they interface with the elderly in their nations now the israel's eldership forum interplayed with prophet samuel who was an elder like them they didn't go to the youthful judges in israel rather they went to their father the national prophet who was an elder like them to discuss with him number three they do not go about tail bearing or carrying rumors on the second tour they deal with the roots by wisely raising the observations without any other party. The characteristic of a proper eldership approach in nation building is that they don't go about tail bearing. Rather, they want to deal with the issue without the third party. Now, let's look at the nation of Israel. The Israel's eldership forum went straight to the biological father of the judges, who was Prophet Samuel. They did not relapse into the temptation of narrating their concern to the friends of the early judges. Now, this is a concern to the acquaintances of the early judges or to other youths in the nation. Number four, they should have a common objective to address existing challenges 
in their nations and they should not be distracted by the complaints of fellow citizens that should be their characteristic they should not be distracted rather they should channel their concern to the appropriate quarters let's come now to the Israeli Elijah forum they had one purpose and they went to the national prophet to express their fears the Bible did not record that they called for a national in-house Congress prior to the discussion with the national prophet. No, I would recall that. They didn't hold a meeting behind the prophet. Uh, let's, t- let's talk about this now. These people are really doing very wickedly. And we know that they are the sons of the national prophet. Uh, what should we do now? Let's send a representative to go and meet their father. Maybe it will be... No, 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 no. They went straight to the national prophet to express their views. The prayer points for you and I are number one, let us pray to have holy youths around us and God-fearing elders. Number two, let us pray to have elders that are truly sincere. We're building the nations across the world. Second green, in 1 Timothy 5 verse 17, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in word and doctrine. In 1 Peter 5 verse 1, the elders which are among you, I exalt. Well, I'm also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also the particular of the glory that shall be revealed. That is also dimension number two. The eldership private infliction on national leadership. Look at first Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, and he said unto them, Behold, that old and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like other nations. There was a problem here. The elders made a mistake, it was a blunder. They actually went to the prophets to complain about his sons, but they did not handle the issue properly. They came to the prophet. They did not present certain issues before the prophet. Rather, they were demanding for a king to judge over them like the other nations, as though God was not the creator of the nation. God had his plan. They never sought for that. They were looking out for another king. Now, the Israel's eldership forum was a good conflict for nation building. It was a sound ideology, but had its shortcomings. It was correct that the sons of Prophet Samuel had bad leadership on the national progress at that time. It was also in order that the forum made praiseworthy visit to us, correcting the anomaly in their nation. Behind the epic move, behind the historical move of the eldership forum was an ulterior motive was an insincere mind. Look at that verse again, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, and said unto him, Behold thou old, and the sons walk not in their ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Now let's let's look at the other motive, something insincere in their request. Number one, they did not request the national prophet's intervention to help counsel and pray for the early judges. They never did that. They didn't come and say, Oh, national prophet, the Lord is with you. The Lord has used you over and over again. We can we are witnesses to this. Could you please pray from your anointing that these judges in Israel will have a change of mind so that they can lead us well? They didn't, they didn't do that. Number two, they did not proffer solutions that were hinged on love and progress. They didn't do that. They wanted an outright removal of the erring judges without any attempt to correct their mistakes. That's what their intention was. That was not a proper elderly approach. Number four, they wanted to become like other nations that had kings in their rulership affairs of their citizens as they did not care to await the manifestation of the plan of the Almighty God for Israel at that time. Number five, they could have had some measure of personal dissatisfaction with the nomination of the judges from the onset. If they had not, they would have made frantic efforts to find ways to help the judges administer better leadership dividends to the nation. It means that they had issues with the domination of these judges from the very beginning because if they had supported it, they would have a concern to know, to find out why is it like this, sir? And what can we do to ameliorate, to cause a change in this leadership? We're not concerned, which means from the very onset of their nomination by their father, by the national prophet, they had issues with that. And they did not raise this issue from the beginning. Number six, they were somewhat disrespectful to the national prophet by their demand. For a king, without first seeking his thoughts on the prevalent administration of the judges who happened to be his sons, it was total disrespectfulness. They came before the national prophet, an elderly man, an old man, and what they would have done was to talk to me and they appeal to him, sir, you are old now, and we know how God has used you from the cradle to this point. I will want such replication of that kind of God's usage on our judges at this time. What can we do to better their laws? 
the Lord's not just the Lord's, the Lords of the nation of Israel. They never did that. Rather, they were an issue, a kind of command. And you get us a king that can rule over us. It was disrespectfulness. And they had forgotten they were talking to the father of those judges. No respect, no regard. No parent who wants you to disrespect the children before his face. After all, if you have anything to correct or to say, you should come humbly. And there's a way you were presented, and the parents will not feel disrespected. They, they disrespected the national prophet number seven. They thought that they were elders in the land got into their heads. Eldership does not mean rulership. Eldership connotes guidance, it connotes mentoring, it means prayerful leadership and maturity. Because they were elders in the land, it got into their head. And as elders in the land, now we can talk to the old prophet, we can talk to the old national prophet. They have forgotten that this old national prophet was used from the cradle. This man had God inside of him. He had the Spirit of God inside of him. This man was the voice of the Almighty God in the land. This man that was the one that reconciled the Israelites with the Almighty God. This man had authority in heaven and authority on earth. And they walk up to him like that and say, we we'll get us a king. With we'll the man that will give us a king like the other nations. That was his respectfulness. And they thought that the elders in the land got into their head. Now we should be careful that even though we are elders, we should not allow the thoughts to get into our head because Eldership is not rulership. Eldership just connotes. It means guidance. It means mentoring. It means prayerful leadership and then maturity. And the prayer points for you and I, number one, let us pray to have the elders that are truly having national healthy building at heart. Let us pray to build our nations well, irrespective of our individual social classes. And the celestial action points, number one, let us get our access for progressive moves and not for gossiping or tail bearing, number two. Do not plot the detriment of your leaders, rather seek to contribute to their progress, even though their mistakes are very obvious. Number three, pray for those ruling over you. Number four, always be in the disposition to contribute meaningfully to leadership. Number five, let your conversations with others be to contribute to leadership and not lay emphasis on their mistakes. The question to you and I is, are you an important contributor? to leadership, the Lord will touch you and I. If you really want to be an important contributor to leadership, I need you to talk to the Lord now and say, Lord, I want to be a positive contributor to leadership. I want to be a contributor to leadership by giving your life to Christ, by giving your heart to Christ, by giving your life to Christ, by laying your sins aside and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. Jesus, come into my heart right now. You talk to the Lord now, as I'm talking now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give my life to you now. I won't go back to evil anymore. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I pray that prayer sincerely. Congratulations. Father, in Jesus' name, any individual, every elder, every youth that has heard this word will become a better youth, become a better elder. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the select icon. Please like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.